Uh, y'all wanna talk about what y'all think about Matt and his possum battle? Get the fuck out of here. I thought Matt was a thug from the West Coast, man. <laughs> he, he, was, he, he, was, he, he was real he was real gentle, man. That shit gave me the chills. I'll fight anybody, but I don't fuck with animals. That's for goddamn sure. If you've been listening to All The Smoke or All The Smoke Unplugged, you know we're really high on women's basketball. The talents and the confidence these women have are making this year's tournament a must-watch. And games are being played all around the country. The best way to track the schedule and get the tickets is with Game Time. I just pulled up the app and I see that there's women's games in LA this week. Or when I'm traveling, I can see which games are near my location. And I can easily see the whole NCAA tournament schedule. Game Time has the best layout and it makes it so easy. I'm always checking the Game Time app for upcoming events. Like Offset is in town this weekend. And our guy, Buster Rhymes, will be in California later this month. And so will the greats like Lauryn Hill. Some concerts aren't to be missed. And I keep up with all the tours on Game Time. I know I'm getting a view of the stage I expect because I can see the view of my seats before I even buy the tickets. And Game Time picks the seats for the best prices. Download the Game Time app, create an account, using the code SMOKE for $20 off your first purchase. That's code SMOKE and $20 off your first purchase. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. What up, world? It's your boy Stack Five. Welcome to Unplug. Don't have my boy Matt Barnes here today, as you know. He, you go on Instagram, you see he's dealing with possum business. Uh, I think he had to do well. We're gonna we gonna talk about that a little later. We got my brother, one of our producers, J Mac, filling in today, as he always do. Ultimate mm-hmm. teammate, J Mac. What's up, my brother? Everything is love, brother. Happy to be here. Yeah, man. And we also got another one of our brothers that's filling in today, that's stepping in. Assistant coach at Georgia Tech, our brother Bonzi Wells. Appreciate yes, your time sir. today, bro. What's up? Oh, I'm good, my brother. I'm good, my brother. Appreciate y'all having me on, man. It means a lot. Yes, sir. Well, let's dig in. You know, we want to welcome my brother to the show. He just wrapped up his first year as assistant Georgia Tech coach under Damon Stoudemire. Bro, how does it feel uh, being at Georgia Tech, being assistant coach, you know, being in the D1, being in the D1 realm now? Oh, man, it's, it's been an awesome experience. Um, I really appreciate my brother Damon um, giving me the call and, and, and elevating me. Um, and just, just he just it's just been a great process that I've that I've learned. You know, coming from a Division two uh, basketball uh, family, it, it was just a, it's just different. Um, you know, Damon is a hell of a coach. He's a hell of a person. He's a hell of a leader. And just the stuff that I'm learning that I didn't know has been priceless for me. Um, you know, at my Division two job, you know, I was kind of winging it a little bit, just kind of doing what I thought I knew about basketball. But Damon is a real teacher. He's teaching me about the game and teaching me about the future and the direction of the game is going into. So it's just been a great, great learning curve for me. Yeah, I, we, I've been knowing you for a long time. We talk all the time. And, you know, we, even when you was at the D2, we talk a lot. And uh, you've been in Atlanta for a minute. As You know, I live here. The job and, and the time that you spend with work is, is, is like you barely have any free time because we talk all the time. We're trying to get together. How, how, how is that from being at a D2 now with being at D1 with Georgia Tech? Well, it's been a it's been a hell of an adjustment. Um, coaches, you know, coach told us when we first came in and said the whole coaching staff down because the whole coaching staff is new. We've never worked with each other. We've never worked with Coach Damon, so everybody's just kind of trying to get to know each other. And one of the first thing he said is, you know, you know, no disrespect to y'all, but we got to say fuck our families right now. You know, we got to really lock in and building this program, or you, and you're gonna miss some things. You're gonna miss the social life. You're gonna miss a lot of stuff, but. What, the way we invest in these kids and invest in this program is going to pay off in the long run. So everybody is totally bought in. You know, I get it. At first, it was a tough adjustment for me, just putting in 12, 13, 14-hour days. And, and, you know, then you know you think about being in Atlanta, you're like, yeah, I'm going to turn up a little bit. But it's just a total different mindset. Um, you know, we work. And when we go home, you're still working, you know, because you're always on the clock for these kids. So, it's, it, it, But it's been cool, though, because we have a great staff. We have Georgia Tech has been great as a family. And these kids we got, they're just really good ass kids, so it's just been a seamless uh, transition for me. Like I said, I really appreciate Damon. Appreciate Damon as my brother, but you know, and I tell people like you know, just be, you know, funny. I know Damon Stoudemire. I don't know this Coach Stoudemire. You know, I know Damon. You know, so mm-hmm. he's so he's you know, and it's been great that he that we got a separate type of relationship where I respect him. You know, as my friend, but as a coach and as a leader, you know, I just respect him. I have the utmost respect for him, and, and you know, and I allow him not allow him, but he can handle me in a different way than he would handle me as my friend. You know, he can yell at me, he can do all that stuff to push me mm-hmm. to get better. And I really appreciate him for that. 
Speaking the difference between Damon Stoudemire, the player, and the coach, what does a Damon, Damon Stoudemire practice look like? I mean, we are from the 90s where we ran yeah. like five seventeens, and, yeah. you know what I mean, did wall sets and a whole bunch of stuff before we even got an opportunity to touch the ball. What does a Damon Stoudemire, uh, Damon Stoudemire, Bonzi Well practice look like in 2024 with these new kids? Uh, coach, coach, not playing with you. He's not playing with you at all, you know. And, you know, what I, what I love about Coach, you know, like I said, he's teaching us a new style of basketball. Um, he's basically, you know, he's with the Boston, he was with the Boston Celtics before he came us, and he's trying to, and we run a lot of the Boston Celtics sets, and he's trying to have a program that translates to where these kids are trying to go to. We run a pro style offense, and the stuff that we do translates. You know, we have a lot of space and we give guys freedom to make plays, but you know, it's got to be within, it's got to be within certain parameters. And you know, coach believes in skill development, mentally and physically. Uh, you know, and then not just for the players, for the coaches as well. You know, he wants us to be our best so we can be, a, you know, you know, personally as coaches so we can be our best for them kids when we get on the court. And he wants everybody on the same page, one accord. And it's just been a great transition. And, you know, we have some great coaches on our staff that's got great experience, that's done this. And for me to be a first year at a Power Five, I've learned so much about the game. And the game has changed, like you said, from when we was in it. It's a whole different mm -hmm. ball game. You know, and, and, and besides basketball, you know, these kids, you know, you, you, you bring in that NIL and these kids are getting real money. So it's, it, it's different how you got to handle these kids. Um, it's different because it's such a cancel culture around here nowadays. So you got to be very, very careful on how you address these kids as well, because, you know, these kids can you know get mad at you and burn your whole house down. So you got to be mm -hmm. totally cognizant on how you how you move with them. But, you know, if you move with love and they respect you, you'll be fine. One last thing, um, <clears throat> you coming from D2, what's the difference for, for, for kids out here, high school players that want to play basketball, what's the difference you've seen between a Division two and a Division one player? Is it athletic ability? Is it IQ? IQ? What's the biggest difference you've noticed that makes a guy a D2 player as opposed to a Division one player? You know, it, it's funny because, you know, I, in my D2, I was saying to myself, like, man, there's a couple guys in the D2 that could probably play, you know, high-level D1 mm -hmm. in, a, in the right situation. But these guys are bigger. They're faster. Mm -hmm. uh, their IQ is off, off the chart. And they're being coached by some real legendary coaches. I mean, some really good coaches who knows this game and gets it and put these kids in the best um, situation to be successful. So on a D2 level, you can you can have a 6-7 center, 6-5 center, and, and go out there and win some games. But if you Fast. pull that, you can't pull that in <laughs> You can't pull that in, in the ACC. You'll in get the ran ACC, through. Yeah. yeah, you'll get ran through. So you know you got you know size obviously, but IQ, understanding the game. Like you got to really understand the game. And it, you know I, I tell our guys all the time, one of the simple plays that our that, that a lot of kids can't do is come off a screen and roll and make a simple pocket pass. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and 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 people don't understand if you can make that pocket pass consistently, you'll mess around and make a whole lot of fucking money. You know what I'm saying? Like especially at this level because. It's just making plays for other people, and it's like I said, we, we run a spaced offense. So, if you can hit those pocket passes, get that ball to the middle, make the defense collapse, and make the re right reads, you know, you can really, really, really be good in this game. Uh, compare the contrast between um, today's basketball and the '90s when you was in college. You know, with this transfer portal and this NIL stuff, you know, I know, I know, it's making it a lot harder and making it more difficult to even build yeah. programs or to even get guys if you ain't just throwing a bag at them or keep guys. Oh, it's definitely tough. You know, we, you know, you didn't get to go to college stack, so I'm, so I'm not talking to you. Uh, I'm, talk, I'm talking, mm. <laughs> I'm talking to Jelani, but, <laughs> but, but, but Jelani, you know what it was like, man. You know, you go to mm. college, you, you know, you got, it's a four year commitment mentally. Like, you know, you saying yeah. to yourself, I'm going to be here four years. Transferring wasn't an option because you had, if you did transfer, you had to sit out a sit year. Out. Yeah. So, you know, guys wasn't even thinking that. And it was more like, okay, I could bring a guy in as a freshman that's probably not ready and I can develop him. And kind of, kind of, kind of, you know, moving along for a sophomore, maybe junior year at the latest. But now mm -hmm. you got to bring in kids that's ready to hoop now because if not, you will lose them at the end of the year because you could, you could just go anywhere at any time. And if these mm -hmm. kids are not happy with their playing time, they're not happy with the coaches. If they're just not happy, period, they have all the leverage to be able to go move around how they want to. And, and that's kind of the gift and the curse. And then also when you get this NIL money, you know, then this, me, and this is my first year kind of being around it. I just question, mm -hmm. like, if you're getting, a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, whatever money these kids are getting, is the hunger still there? And that's what I'm just trying to learn about some of these kids. <clears throat> I just kind of, <clears throat> I talk to them. I'd be like, "Fella, like, I know you're getting this, all this bag and all this stuff, but do you still love this shit? Like, do you really love it? You know, because when we played, we had an end goal. Like, okay, man, if I just really grind, I can get to that prize at the, at the end of the rainbow. And right. these guys, are getting, you know, they're getting into it early. Like, they got money coming in. Like, it's, 
there's some freshmen that, that's coming in making more than the coaching staff. So, mm, you know, so it's crazy. So it's, yeah, so it's so crazy. So, you know, you got to just question their hunger. But a lot of these kids, especially our kids, these kids have been great. I haven't seen really no no guys that's just kind of like slacking a little bit and kind of resting on the little money they got. You know, we always try to mm-hmm. emphasize that this is just this is just a taste of the type of money that you can the make. Beginning. Yeah, mm-hmm. this is just the beginning, but you got to really lock in. You got to trust us. You got to trust our experience. And, you know, and if you listen and you keep adding to your game and keep building, sky's the limit for you, especially dealing with us because, you know, me and Damon and the rest of the coaching staff, we're so connected in this game in terms of where you're trying to get to. You know, right. there's, there's no other spot that, that the kids should be trying to go to. And I, if, if they want that, especially we run, like I said, a pro style offense, and we do shit around here to translate into being a pro. Yep, that's why I'm trying to get my son there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The, uh, the ACC looks good right now, bro. You got four AC, ACC teams in the Sweet 16: Duke, Clemson, UNC, and NC State. NC State. Who you think got the best shot? Oh man, that's that's, that's interesting. You know, I, I'm, as, as 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 I listen to you say that list, you know, we beat three out of those four teams just to mm-hmm. kind of, <laughs> which, which, which was good for us. Which was good for us. We didn't, you know, we had an under 500 season, but man, we made some strides and we won some big games. And you know, to be able to compete with the big boys, especially you know them going to the Sweet 16, you know, makes us poke our chest out come a little bit to let us yeah, know that we got now. something to build off of. But mm-hmm. you know, the, you know, Duke, you know, obviously Duke and Carolina is going to be you know, always there. But my, my sleeper team, you know, I love NC State, but Clemson for us was probably the toughest team because they have some bigs. They have P.J. Hall, and they got this one kid named Shefflin. He's about 6'8". But, man, this kid gets every rebound. He's such a bully, and he's just so aggressive. He can pick and pop. You know, and they got some really good guards and Chase Hunter and, 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 and Gerard, the, the three-point shooter. So Clemson is my, my sleeper team. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't sleep on Duke in North Carolina. You always expect them to be there. Right. But 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 I think Clemson is, is, is going to be there. And I'm really proud of North Carolina State. You know, people don't understand they had to win five games in five days to win the ACC championship. They've done, they done that. And then they won two games in three and four nights. So they probably don't want seven games in nine nights. So hats off to those guys. You just hope they can keep the, the energy level up and keep that going. You know, right. now that they got a couple of days off. But it, it, it's been amazing what they've been doing. Uh, UNC, they got a 24 and a 25 year old in the starting lineup. Bonzi, is this the future of college basketball? Is this a problem? And I, I don't know, you, you, you've been there. Are we going to see, in comparison, uh, the Thunder have the same average in their starting five in the league, you know, just for comparison and some context. Is this the future of college basketball because of NIL and because of the trajectory of where the league is tending to going, you know, going on the younger inside of obviously if OKC is having some success? Well, I, I think it might come back a little bit in age. I think that the age group of the kids we're seeing now is some of the residual of the kids from the COVID year. They got that COVID mm. year that they that you know, a lot of kids are exercising that fifth year, and some of them might even have a six year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's why, especially if they paying, you know, the motto: if, if y'all paying, I'm staying. And that's Word. what the kids, you know, they they paying them kids good. So you know, why not? Especially if it's not a guarantee that you're going to make it to that next level and make that bag. Mm-hmm. But I think, you know, moving forward, I think you know you, you got to have a good mixture. You got to have some young boys, but you got to have some vets too, some older guys. Yeah. You know, 21, 22, 23 that's been there to kind of balance each other out because. It's, it's a lot to ask these kids who've never played at this high level to come out there and be successful at this high level against, you know, everybody in the ACC top 100 player, you know, McDonald's All-American and all that type of stuff that these kids come in with these accolades and everybody's done that. So it's a lot to ask these kids to come in and, and dominate grown men, the people who really mm-hmm. been around, who understands this. So, you know, you, you want to have a good balance. And, you know, you, you look at a team like, no disrespect to Kentucky, but Kentucky got a lot of young boys and they can play mm-hmm. – but when it comes down to it, you know what I'm saying, it's tough to be the vet. You know, it's, it's tough to be veteran players, guys who've been there, done that, and understand what this is. And if you have a good mix, I think that's kind of the formula guys going to go by, get you three or four young boys that's really nice, and then, you know, get you three or four older guys and then just try mm-hmm. to mix them, and hopefully they gel together. So I know that's that's probably what we're trying to do at Georgia Tech is trying to, you know, bring in some some older guys that can really help our young guys be that's the best fair. they can possibly be. That's fair because that's not like ignoring the situation. It's not yeah. like, you know what I mean? We can't, that's not, you know, you can't ignore it and acting like it's not going on because, like, yeah. as we can see, there are 25 and 26 year old players. So, I mean, if you can keep a, a, a balance, that's dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. And uh, before we go on the NBA, shout out to uh, the games we're missing right now. I was watching a little bit, but 
Hidalgo's playing right now with Notre Dame. Kaylin, yes, Kaylin, uh, Paige Buckets is up next. Then Caitlin Clark. Then you got Juju to finish the day off. So shout out to the girls mm -hmm. right now. That's all I've been watching. Uh, they balling right now. A lot of people been talking about the next generation. Let's reflect back on uh, every on the generations and the stars and their legacies. Let's do LeBron first. LeBron got four titles. I want uh, your, your your opinion, uh, Bonzi and uh, J Mac. Mm -hmm. yeah. LeBron got four titles: 2012, 2013, 2016, and 2020. Uh, his all time score of all time. He got so many records that he didn't broke. He's still playing at a high level. Where would you have him at the top of all time? Ooh, I mean, <clears throat> Brown is you know Brown is a special player. He's one of my favorite players to ever play. Nice. I really love watching him. I like I like how he moves in real life. You know what I'm saying? He's a he's, He's a beacon of hope for guys who come in with all that pressure and, and, and you can sustain it throughout your career and not get caught up in nothing. So hats off to Brian. And if I had to rank him in my top, it, it almost goes, I, I hear this conversation all the time. And, you know, you got Joe, I, I got Jordan, Kobe, then Brian. So it's, mm -hmm. it's one A, one B and one C to me. Yeah, because, yeah. you know, you, you know, you can't go <laughs> wrong with neither one of those three and no disrespect to, 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 to the rest of the players who played the game because I really respect them. But when you talk about, in my opinion, I think Bron is a he's a one C guy because I can't put him ahead of Kobe and Mike because those guys are my size six five six six and they didn't really have no no advantage you know what I'm saying on the court other than skill set and you know Bron is a big six nine two fifty so he can sometimes over the power of the game and, 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 and score in those ways but the, the skill set of Mike and Kobe is just in my opinion unmatched. What you think, J Mac? I mean, you got some other people on those lists. You got Steph with four titles, you know, 2015, 17, 18, 22. Kawhi had two titles. Kevin Durant got two titles. But I'm going I'm, I'm to start a petition today. Since we're talking about – we start we talking about errors and stack, you're going to feel this one. You might feel it. Right. Um, no freaky. Um, uh, I want to I uh, talk about Tim Duncan. Mm. We're going to talk about Tim Duncan errors. Ooh. I feel like Tim Duncan, and he should be in there twice because he ended a, he ended, a lot of people didn't win championships because of Tim Duncan. Yes. And he did it twice in, in, with a 10 year gap. So if we're going to be talking about errors and lists, you know what I mean? I like to do a petition where we not only acknowledge the Tim Duncan era, but I also like to put a petition out there to be, he should have two different eras because yeah. he did it in, 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 in a 10 years, in a 10 year gap. So, and Tim so. has four or five. He got five. He got five. He got five. Tim's got five. Yeah. five. yeah. <laughs> so. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm, I'm going to put him up there, but I'm with Bonzi. I love LeBron's body of work, Kobe, Me Jordan, too. you know what I mean? We acknowledge Kawhi's, you know what I mean? Kawhi had a hell of a run if it wasn't for injuries. You know, at one point he was tracking towards Mike, finals MVP, defensive player of the year, yeah. uh, you know what I mean? All-star, whatever, you know, going to the finals for a couple of years. So Kawhi was up there. You got to put KD up there because oh, KD I'm made sure. those runs with the with the Warriors and he's, you know, for the new school, for the new <laughs> generation but I'm gonna I'm stick with that Timmy petition yeah I'm with I'm with you totally on that I mean after you after you go from Jordan Kobe LeBron I don't think it's a, it's a better player that had more skill that was more talented that had a better mm -hmm. career than Tim Duncan bro I just don't see it I don't mm -hmm. see it yeah mm -hmm. Tim, Tim was a monster it just Tim's game was just so and there's no disrespect to him he had like a a, a basic game like he didn't do yep. nothing like like with flair to it you know it wasn't sexy at all it, it wasn't sexy so everybody wants to be sexy in this game they want to like tim just went and got his job done he put that hard hat on did his job went home didn't say a word and people don't really like you know people who they don't really like that but guys like us who played the game you really appreciate it and people who like yourself stack played with him or played against him you know how tough it was to stop that basic shit like you couldn't he gonna jab he gonna open up jab step you bank shot he gonna he gonna post you up hook, but just great passer, great team guy, anchor. You know, you go to the hole, you are gonna meet Timmy there. They are gonna force you baseline. Tim is always there. So Tim, the, the shit he did translated for the people who really know basketball, but for the people who's out there who just mm -hmm. want to be lit and look sweet at the LA Fitness or and all that stuff. That they're not gonna be like, oh Tim Duncan, I'm doing this Tim Duncan. You know, they, they you're, <laughs> not, you're not you're not hearing that. So, but but hats off to Tim Duncan and the Spurs teams because I know in '99 they cost us a championship for sure. Yeah, and 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 that year the Lakers was about to win four after after they had already won three. Yeah. Tim shut that down by damn near by himself, man. I I, I seen him do some uh -huh. great things. And when they, when they, when the coach tell you, take what the game give you, 
He is the yeah. mascot of that for sure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, but, hey, but check this out, uh, J Mac. If I if I if I had if I gave you these four, rank these four: LeBron, Steph, KD, Kawhi. Ooh, that's filthy. Why y'all gonna put me? <laughs> but you know what I mean. And yeah, this could yeah, change yeah. later on. By the time you could, by the time y'all see Ooh. this, I might have switched this once or twice. But right now, Ooh. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Man, I'm I'm a, I'm with Bonzi. I'm a LeBron guy. I tend to I tend to lead to to the LeBron body of work. I'm sorry. How can you not? Man. How can yeah, you? Yeah, I'm a, I'm gonna go LeBron, Steph, and I gotta go Kawhi KD because Kawhi did it without Steph and Clay. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, he had a hell of a run up in there in Toronto. One of the ones where he was like the main focal guy without two other key big figure. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what I got: LeBron, Steph, Ooh. Kawhi. KD, who you got, Bonzi? Oh man, I, I, I'm I'm similar to to, to J Mac. I'm gonna go LeBron, Steph, but I'm gonna move uh, KD on top of Kawhi. I mean, I, right. and I, and I want to move KD higher because KD is you know he's one of my favorite players in the league. He's, he's so unstoppable. He's so yep. unstoppable, and I think KD is really underappreciated as well. You know, people talk about his two titles and he went and got him with Steph and all that shit, but if you look at his body of work. Man, this man has averaged 26, 27 for how many years in a row? 15, 16 years straight? Like, pe- mm-hmm. people don't understand how tough that is to stay consistent. It's difficult. You know, you know, through injuries and all that stuff. You know, and I know, no, no, I know Kawhi has injuries, some injuries as well, but KD is just a – he's a cheat code because you can't affect the shot. He's legit seven foot. He has a, he has a filthy, filthy soft jump shot, and he knows how to get to a spot better than anybody I've ever seen in the game other than maybe Chris Paul. And, and somebody just get into their spot and know what it is. So, I mean, I, I would go, like I said, LeBron, Steph, KD, and uh, uh, Kawhi last. And there's no disrespect to any of those guys. No, no, there isn't. Like I said, your answer could change. And it's no disrespect yeah. to anybody because this is great company to be talking in, interchanging, you know, regardless of the order. Yeah, yep. 100%. 100%. What, what about you, Stack? What's your order? Uh, good question. Definitely the king is first. Um Steph's by Steph body of work is is hard to deny mm-hmm. in this group, but it's mm-hmm. I would still go KD second for just yeah. what he's been doing. He's averaged twenty five points or more every year since two thousand nine, mm-hmm. and, and and you think about where he is on the scoring list. Just imagine if he, if he didn't have those two years of injury where he missed all mm-hmm. that time. That's that's yeah. two thousand. But that's, that's four thousand, five thousand more points. So and 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 he and he already passing up Shaq and everybody else right now. So. Um, I, I put KD second, then I go Steph, just of the respect of being the best shooter ever, and the mm-hmm. four championships, the leading that team, making that uh, team a dynasty, and uh, of course Kawhi. Kawhi did some great things, man. I mean that that year, the the two year run he had, but the uh, two uh, Finals MVP, two championships, like that mm-hmm. shit was special. So uh, mm-hmm. I go LeBron, KD, Steph, Kawhi. Mm-hmm. And there's no wrong yeah, there's no wrong answers here, by the way. And, uh, you know, yeah. it's, it's just choose your own adventure and how you like it type thing. Right. <laughs> Feel good story of the year. We got three options. Let's talk about them. Rockets, Ime Udoka. 38 games under 500 last year. This year they're up there 500. Bottom three defense last year. This year they're top seven. You also got Jamal Mosley at Orlando Magic. 14, 14 games under 500 last year. 13 games over 500 this year. Paolo Bancaro is having a breakout season. I think he should be talked about more. And, I, and they're, they're the top five team in the East right now, so you can't be surprised what they're doing. Also, the Pelicans mm-hmm. with Willie Green. On pace to 50 mm-hmm. wins this year. The best season since Chris Paul been there. And that's saying a lot with everything they was dealing with with Zion at the beginning of the year. Which team or which situation, y'all, is y'all feel-good story of the year so far? Um, I mean, respect to all three of them. I mean, those guys are doing a hell of a job. I'm just so proud of them. Um, from what they're doing and, you know, cause the expectation, you know, especially for maybe Orlando, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't high, but, you know, you're hoping for the best. But, you know, my, I got to give mine to Ime. You know, Ime, that was my rookie. So, you know, I really, you know, that's my guy right there. I'm just so proud of him because after the shit he went through uh, mm-hmm. in Boston and to be able to bounce back and, and, and come to a, a Rockets team that was, you know, I, and, and I played for the Rockets and I know how proud of a franchise that is to go to that franchise when they're playing some of the worst basketball in the league over the last couple of years to be able to turn them around. I Especially think when you was there. You're crazy as hell. <laughs> crazy as hell. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not even going to address that. I ain't going to address that silly shit. 
<laughs> but uh, but 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 no, nah, but but the email though, because you know you go you come from Boston. Boston had a whip over there. They was winning all those games and all that good stuff. And then you know you you know people like okay maybe it's the team. Can he really coach for real? Now you yeah. come to a Rockets team and you know mm-hmm. and you turn the whole vibe around around there. Now they they're mm-hmm. confident going into every game. You know you, a young you know, team at that too, Bonzi. Gave him purpose. Uh, yeah, yeah, gave him purpose. Gave him mm-hmm. gave my identity. And, and, and that's what it's all about. That's what you want from your head coach. They got somebody they can believe in now. They got somebody that know they got their back. Will, you know, he got into it with LeBron. So if that mm-hmm. didn't really hype the team up, that my coach going at the, the, the top player in the league, if that don't make you want to run through a brick wall for a guy like that, I don't know what will. So I got to give it to E-May because what he's doing with the Rockets is, 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 is unbelievable. Matt, hey, Matt, what you got? Um, all three of these guys came into somewhat unstable situations. And for black head coaches, you know, that that can be a death sentence. You know, excuse yeah. the term for, you know, for lack of a better term. You know, it's not the best situation to be put up into success. And what I've seen is they brought the stability to situations. You know, shout out to all three, like Bonzi said. Uh, I'm going to go with Jay Mose. Jay Mose is my dog, you know what I mean, San Diego guy. Uh, the way he's been able to consistently, you know, manage Paolo to your point stack, he's been consistently, uh, the best player on, you know, on that team, you know, as his rookie campaign moving into, you know, this year and the years coming up. Uh, Suggs had a breakout year. He's first team all defense. So he's using the assets and the picks that they got. He's only there mm-hmm. managing to get better. Uh, they're staying on the court. Their availability is up there. And I mean, from 14 games under 500 to 13 games over 500 this year. Big reason why he got a four-year extension. Um, yeah. I've talked to the players during summer league. They love J Mo's. You know what I mean. At the end of the day, as a, as a man off the court and as a coach, so uh, my, I'm gonna give my nod to J Mo's. Not that it, not to, not that it's any not you know disrespect to anybody. I'm not gonna keep saying that, but yeah, I'm gonna pick J Mo's in this yeah. feel good yeah. story of the year. Yeah, we ain't doing that. You know, we don't yeah. do that here. Yeah. I, um, we go. We we got love to all the bro- all these three of these mm-hmm. brothers, man. They're all three black coaches who are doing great, man. I, I salute mm-hmm. all of them. But I, I, we have to pick one. And I'm going with Willie Green, considering, mm-hmm. uh, like you say, J Mac. I got a relationship with Willie Green, but also yeah. knowing that everything they went through at the beginning of the season, with not knowing what was what, what player Zion was going to be, was he going to be healthy? Uh, mm-hmm. The organization the organization was really dependent on him, and that's a lot of fire to be up under mm-hmm. as a young coach. You know what I'm saying? We're trying to get your players to all buy in and be on the same page. And Willie Green is a sharp guy, and he was willing to do that. So where they at right now? I'm so happy for him to to get them having the best the best record uh, they've ever had in the organization since Chris Paul. That says a lot considering everything he went through at the beginning of the season. Detroit Willie, yes sir. <laughs> Next we got Dr. Dre, the Diggy Diggy Doc, y'all. Dr. Yes, Dre sir. Star, Dr. Dre Star and Villain. We saw our guys DJ Quick and Big Boy there. I mean. Dr. Dre should have been had his star. Uh, this, this is this is nothing that's surprising to nobody. He, he is the GOAT when it comes to hip-hop. He is the GOAT when it comes to production and having your music sounding the best it could possibly sound. Uh, mm-hmm. He is the GOAT of uh, uh, making money outside of rap and marketing himself and marketing other rappers and building other rappers, making them stars from Eminem to 50 Cent. Mm-hmm. Dre is just the GOAT all the way around. So him getting his star was definitely something that we all knew was coming, but we definitely want to congratulate him on Unplugged. Definitely earned, not given. West West. West West, West West, West West. Dr. Dre said something that's interesting, y'all. I want, I want to see y'all opinion on this. He said that mm-hmm. I don't think anyone who is rapping can touch Eminem on the microphone. What y'all think about that? Oh, man. I, I'm, I'm not into the music like you are, but I'm a Midwest guy. And, mm-hmm. you know, I got to respect what Eminem does. But I think we talked about it off camera. I, I've never heard too many people, and I, and, and I know my boy Mike Miller is going to be mad at me because he's a huge Eminem fan. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my, Mike, my boy Mike Miller, shout out to Mike Miller. But uh, I never heard nobody in my neighborhood really, really, really bumping, you know, Eminem like that. You know what I mean? But, but you know, I respect his music. I respect his flow if you really listen to it. But I, I don't know if I can co-sign with Dr. Dre in mm-hmm. terms of that. But I'm a novice compared to him, so, you know, my opinion don't really matter. But. I, I I like some other rappers on, on top of him before I would take Eminem as number one. Right. I'm going to echo what Bonzi said. I am a novice. You know, I know I am no longer on the level of Eminem or Dr. Dre. But, you know, normally I'm super. I'm a California holic. I would just side just to be annoyingly West Coast, especially with y'all two on here, uh, considering, <laughs> considering what I just had to deal with in the intro. But, um, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a agree with, I'm a agree with Bonzi. You know, uh, it doesn't, you know, sometimes it comes up. I hear a song when it's, 
when you lift and weights or it's on your iPod or it shuffles in, you like, you know, but it's not Eminem isn't an artist that I go looking for. And I love Eminem at the same time of the day, but it's just a, somebody that comes up on it. Don't get no play in my ride. Yeah, you know what I mean, and, 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 and that and that ain't no diss to him because not like, at all. I, I I respect his grind. You know where he come from, how he came up to to make himself who he is today. I respect all that. You know what I mean. And um, he can flow. He is one of the top MCs. You know, just 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 to us and our culture. You know what I'm saying. We just we it's just, it's hard to put him above somebody that you've been listening to every day of your life. It's hard okay. to put him above, it's, it's hard to put him above somebody who from your neighborhood, who you've seen come up, you know what I'm saying? And now one of the biggest rappers in the world. So it's, it's hard, but respect to him, respect to Dr. Dre. When they speak, we always take their opinion in consideration. Uh, y'all wanna talk about what y'all think about Matt and this possum battle? We got a motherfucker in the house. I don't know what bro's trying to do. Came in the old house and he's here thugging it. <laughs> I, I think he won. I think everybody I think he won. won. He won. The possum won. The possum got to go go home and, and get back to his family. You know what I mean? It wasn't nothing. That he was out there probably trying to get something to drag back. Wasn't nothing out there. He got to go home. He might have a concussion. He might have a little concussion. But, you know, he lived to fight another day. Good job, I, 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 I expected more out of Matt, especially, you know what I'm saying, after some of the, some of the altercations Matt stupid. being in. After some of the altercations Matt being in, I, I thought Matt was a thug from the West Coast, man. He was real gentle, man. He was gentle, man. He had soft hands right there. Like, he ain't got no, he ain't got no scabs on his, on, on, on his hands. He feel like, he ain't got no calluses. Man, he had, hey, he, hey, he, hey boys, we, boy. we, we supposed to hear some mother... Get, get, yeah, get, get, yeah, we did yeah. none of that, man. I, 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 mm. I thought he was going to pop, pop. None of that. Mm-mm. He was all nice and, and ushering. He, he did pop him upside the head a couple times, but it was a it was an underhanded throw. Get the fuck out of here. About to put a pitching wedge up his ass. Pause. This nigga's ready for war. I don't want no problems. You don't want no problems. Let's both go home to our families. Should I spray him with Raid? Water on. What we doing, homie? All right, here we go. What we doing, bro? Ah, there we go. There we go. This way, this way. No, bitch, not that way. God damn it. Whoever said water, now he's on the run. Ain't that a bitch? It wasn't no ah. It wasn't no fastball. Mm, it, was a, it was a slow pitch. <laughs> mm. he, needed some, he, needed, he needed some good media. Yeah, he can't yeah, afford yeah. it out here. He don't, need, yeah. he don't need Pete on him, too. If I light up a joint and just get him high, he'll go to sleep. And I can pull him out by his tail. I got him. Break. Go ahead, come on now. Break, break, break. There we go. He's out of here. Go, bro. Go to freedom. Yeah. Good for you, bro. End it peacefully. Go back to the family. That shit gave me the chills. I'll fight anybody, but I don't fuck with animals. That's for goddamn sure. Hey, hey you know what? Way to multitask, my nigga. I, I think that's what's getting lost. Yeah. <laughs> Way the to camera multitask works. under pressure with the camera and, oh, man, that was awesome. Oh, yeah, he narrated the whole thing. I felt like I was involved. He did a great job. He might get, he might get an award for that. You can direct and act at the same time, my brother. You bravo, just showed bravo, us bravo, that. Bravo, <laughs> bravo, bravo, bravo. Bravo. You on your way. We on the way, man. You and we on right. the way. Shout out to my bro, though. You definitely was missed today, man. Uh, Matt, hope you taking care of your possums and all that at the crib. Bonzi, mm-hmm. bro, we appreciate you coming on the show yeah. and taking some time out of your busy schedule, man. You know we got yeah. love for you. Congratulations yeah. on the job and help me get my son over there, nigga. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> J Mac, you always fill in and do what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? With me and Matt down, the ultimate teammate, bro. I love you to death. Thank My you all for tuning in to Unplug. We'll see y'all next Monday.